Okay, so welcome everybody um, to another series or another episode on MPS in the series of, um, of introduction streams that I do here. Um, so behind here on the screen you can see um, what we built yesterday. Um, we started with the very a simple language with a few concepts, um, some statements and some expressions. And uh, today we will take a closer look at how to make these things more usable because currently we didn't care much about how the user interacts with our, with our language from the editor. Um, we only defined the basic concepts that we want to use um, and uh, it's still very cumbersome to to interact with it, I would say. So, um, for instance, or uh, you can actually, if you press enter here at this location, um, and you end up with an empty line, there's no way to change the content of the empty line, for instance, here. Yeah. Um, even if I type something, um, nothing happens on the screen. Um, you always have to invoke the code completion menu at the moment to um, change things in the program. So let's say we want to have a variable here, put it x, and then uh, we would like to initialize it. So if we want to just initialize it with a number, we have to select number literal from the code completion menu and then enter a number literal. There's also a little checking going on, so I can define a number literal that contains various kinds of characters. Um, that are not valid for a, a normal number, even if we would include hex um, literals. Uh, there's no checking going on, so the user can enter whatever he wants in this, uh, whatever it's desired in this location. Um, also, using uh, expressions is uh, quite hard, so instead of uh, just typing plus here, um, nothing happens because the plus is now part of the, the number literal that we define here so we also need to do something about this because if you want to enter a, a plus then you have to select the plus first and then fill out the left and the right side and if you want to nest um, the individual expressions here you also have to select first what's the what you want to put on the on the left and the right side so right now this is quite basic there's not much um, that we support here for the user so that it's easier to edit and we will change that today um, first we will do this with the things that MPS ships out of the box um, and do this for one or two examples and show you how to interact with this uh, APIs there and the language extensions that MPS gives you to um, define the behavior of the editor and then later on if my uh, voice permits today because uh, a bit worn out um, we will also take a look at grammar cells uh, which is a extension to MPS which allows easier definition of these kind of um, usability or interaction aspects of, of the user with an editor so that you get to more consistent editors easily. You can of course do all of this with the APIs that uh, are shipped, or the, the tools that MPS ships by default, um, but with these open source extensions that we will use, um, it's, it's much easier uh, to do. And still you can mix and, max, um, mix and match it, so if you um, If you have a use case where the abstractions that we that are provided by the open source framework do not really match what you need to do or you need very low level control about how the user can interact with the editor you, know, you can still use the um, the normal way so it's uh, both things are supported in parallel okay so first thing i would like to introduce um is a new kind of statement um because it's 
on the one hand side it's easier to demo with this uh, some of the things I would like to show today. But I think it also makes sense for the later development of the language. So right now you, there's no way to express something um, where there is a simple expression on the single line in, in the program. Later on if we would like if we add something like functions or, or method invocations or something like that. Um, we might just want to have expression statements. So this is a statement that contains a single expression. Um, and it's the first thing we will add today um, as a quick thing. So add a new concept, expression, statement, and it's a statement. And as the name suggests, the expression statement contains a single expression. Add the same expression here. It's not not optional. This, and we also need to define an editor for this. So let's do this also very quickly. Um, and the editor simply shows the expression here on a single line. So these, there is only one um, one editor cell here involved. We could do something like surrounding this with a horizontal. A collection and then uh, add a delimiter in the end but uh, for our purpose I don't think we need this now. Let's build that. Okay. And now the code completion menu shows uh, three entries. So one is the empty statement. Um, the second one is now our new expression statement and the already existing variable declaration that we introduced last time. So if we now select an expression statement um, in the code completion menu, we can now enter an expression on a single line. So like this. And we could also nest things here, but I think you get the idea behind the expression statement. So it's an expression that is embedded in a, in a statement here. Um, second thing we should take care of, I think, is uh, that uh, the user cannot enter invalid values for a number literal. So there are no um, no. No normal, no characters allowed except for numbers. For number, uh, for yeah. Um, so we can for now just limit it to the to characters from one to nine. Uh, let's not support floating point or things like that in the first place. Let's just make sure that it's an integer that the user has entered. How can we do this? Um, MPS allows us to define constraints on properties. So each concept has a constraint aspect, which we also covered in one of the earlier episodes. Um, so let's create a new constraint aspect for the number letter. And then there's a section property constraints in there, uh, where we can just add a new constraint and then choose the property for which this constraint um, is. And uh, that in this case, we want to uh, constrain the value. Um, and we want to define when it's valid. We don't want to um, change how it's set or, uh, or got from, from, uh, from the outside world. We just want to um, ensure that, uh, check that the, that the value is, uh, um, is valid that the user entered here. So, I think the easiest thing to do here is um, so the the property value parameter that we get here is of type string. Um, you can always uh, take a look at the types at, uh, in your program by compressing uh, Command Shift T or Control Shift T, depending if you're on Windows or on the Mac. You can also see it at the uh, at the bottom of the screen. So each time I use a keyboard shortcut, um, it pops up at the bottom of the screen. So in this case, it's uh, control shift T or command shift T. Um, and that pops up the, the type explorer and the type explorer uh, 
tells you what's the type of the thing where the current uh, where the where the cursor is currently placed. If there are any type system errors, it also allows you to go to um, the rule that has caused it. But for us, this is for now. This is not not what we want to do. I just wanted to check what's the um, what's the value of the of the property value parameter that we get here. So um, that is also connected to the type of property that you define in the property section um, of the structure aspect. So if you change the type here, it will also change accordingly here. Okay, so, well, no, it uh, actually here it won't change because here you get the raw value of what the user has entered. Um, okay, so let's just match the value of uh, the string value against the uh, regex here so let's make it 0 to 9 plus which should match all characters from 0 to 9 um in an infinite amount of them let's rebuild this and now let's go back to the workbook so our example here, and let's try to enter something that is not a number. So in this case, for instance, G or some other characters that are not uh, numbers. And um, you can see that the editor immediately responds by rendering the cell red in this location. So the property value is not, not valid at this point. Okay. Um, So this was the two easy things we did. Um, and now the next thing I would like to address is that when you press enter, you get empty lines, which is the behavior that we want to have. But um, you can't type on that empty line to change the, the, the program. So you have to always invoke the, the code completion menu here and then select what you want to replace at this location. Um, so the first thing we can do is, um, we can go to the editor definition of this empty statement. So as usual, we can take a look at the inspector and see what the concept of uh, the thing is uh, where the carrot is currently placed. Um, and um, we can also click here and go to uh, the, the concept declaration by clicking this button here on the, on the right, so following this hyperlink. Um, we can also go back and uh, press Command Shift S or Control Shift S and it navigates to the concept declaration. You can also do that from the context menu. So if you right click somewhere, you can say go to and then concept declaration and also editor declaration if you like to. So um, the the key combina uh, the keyboard shortcut assigned to those two is also always shown in the in the menu here. So we can also go to the editor definition, which is what we actually want to do. Um, and currently, this constant here um, is not editable. Um, by default, MPS will make all editor cells that contain a constant value read-only. So you cannot edit them. Um, but we can change this behavior. So what we would like to do is uh, we would like to get the user into a state where he can um, he can type here, right? Um, so the first thing we do for this is setting this to editable true again, um, which overrides the default MPS behavior in this case of making this read-only. So let's do that and see what happens. We may now go back to the workbook and we start typing. We can see that at least the characters that I type on the keyboard um, show up on the screen. So now the 
the location in the editor is no longer read only. Um, but still, we can't start typing like a number here, and then it's it's still read, right? So we ideally we would like to allow the user to type at this at this location um, a number, and then it's automatically transformed into something that is an expression statement and it contains a number literal like this. So this would be the ideal case, right? So we, the user starts typing and um, gets the program into, uh, the editor into a valid state here. So how can we do this? Um, this can also be done in the, so, so this is also part of the editor. So, um, the in prior versions of MPS, this was a bit different. It was um, much more separated. So there was a separate aspect for this kind of actions it was called. Now you can define them inside of um, the editor aspect of the language. Um, but before we do that, there's one second, there's a second thing um, that is quite strange. So there's still the empty statement in the code completion menu. Um, which makes little sense because you have already an empty statement here, right? So it's it's an empty line. It makes no sense to replace an empty line with an empty line. So let's remove that empty statement from the code completion menu. Um, and we can do this by defining a substitute menu. So substitute menus are the things are mm, yeah so the this the substitute menu that you define oh this was actually the wrong one and that's a contribution i want to have a default one so um the substitute menu def if there is a substitute menu definition for the concept um this is taken into account when uh showing the autocomplete menu, so content assistant in this place. Um, and if we want something to not show up there, we simply define an empty one, so it does not contribute anything to the substitute menu. So if we select the empty statement here and we leave it empty, so the substitute menu for this particular concept is empty, it will not contribute anything to the global code completion dialog that is shown up. Okay. Now, if we press Control Space to invoke the um, the code completion, we can see that the, the concept is gone. Um, what MPS also does is it automatically matches um, things that you type against the content of the code completion menu. So, if you see something in the code completion menu, in this case, variable. You can type variable, and then autom MPS automatically um, invokes the, the or does the underlying um, transformation that uh, would also happen when you select it from the code completion. Um, so for a variable, it's uh, it's quite easy. You can go to this empty line and just type variable. It works. Um, but the case for the expression statement here, that still does not work. So you can't type one and um, get an expression statement that contains the number. It's still invalid for, for MPS. Um, what can we do about this? We can use the same mechanism here. So. What we would like to do is we would like to tell MPS um, at this location where we can have a variable or an expression statement, um, we would also like to allow the user to enter an expression. And when he enters that expression, 
um, it should be automatically wrapped in the expression statement because there's no reason that the user needs to select the expression statement manually. Um, and we can use also the, the substitute menu for this because we want to contribute some other behavior to the code completion menu. As for removing something from the code completion menu, we define a new um, default substitute menu. And in this case, it's for the expression statement. And um, if we would now just build this and take a look at how the program defines, uh, behaves, sorry. We know now the, the, the um, expression statement is entirely gone from the code completion menu. So the only thing you could write here is a variable. Um, but we want to get a different behavior. So in this DSL that MPS ships for defining the substitute menu, um, there are different concepts available here. So there's, you can group things, you can include a different menu. You can also supply a simple list of things that should be instantiated at that point. You can do some parameter parameter parameterized um, menu parts where the uh, entry in the or the text in the code completion menu as well is dynamically calculated based on some context. Um, we don't need this here. We also don't want references and simple stuff like this. What we would like to do is we would like to define MPS wrap our expression into an expression statement. So this is what the wrap substitute menu is used for. Um, and if you select that from the code completion menu, MPS presents you something like this. Okay, so first thing you need to choose is what kind of thing you, which menu you would like to wrap. MPS in general distinguishes between two kinds of substitute menus. The default one, which is the one that is used by default for the code completion menu and in other cases. Um, but you could also define a named one, which you then can reference to explicitly. So if you have a special code completion that should only happen at a specific location, you could use that to um, express this kind of things. But for us, we just stick with the default one. Um, and then it asks us for the concept that we would like to wrap and in our case, it's the expression step because we want to allow the user to start typing the expression without uh, selecting the expression statement first. Okay. So you now also get an info message here that um, there is no default menu for the expression defined and therefore you would get the um, default one but we don't care about that at the moment um and what should happen in this place uh, in this case is that um and we now have to define what mps should do when this actual when this wrap should actually happen um so we get a bunch of parameters here into the uh, function that is executed here or the code that is executed and down in the inspector, we can get some, some help about um, what is um, what are the types and the, the purpose of these parameters. So we get the parent node, uh, the um, parent target node, yeah, and the links, etc. These are all things we don't really care about at the moment. So the only thing we really care about is the thing we should should wrap into an expression statement here. So um, MPS will already type this for us correctly. So if we go to node to wrap and we press command shift T on it, we can see that MPS has inferred that this 
node that we want to wrap is of the type expression because we have set this up here in the um, menu that we want to wrap. So for what concept this is. Okay. Um, and it's, it, is, it expects us to return an expression statement. So what we do is we simply create one. So let's first say new node expression statement. And store it in a variable. Um, what we do here is we use an extension to uh, Java that MPS ships out of the box, which allows us to interact with um, with the AST or or model, how we usually call it, inside of MPS. Um, so what we do here is we create a new AST node of type expression statement. And then we can also um, set the expression of it correctly. So we get the expression here as the node to wrap, which is the thing we want to package into the expression statement. So we create the new instance of the expression statement. And then um, our expression statement has this role expression, which we defined earlier. Um, and then we just simply take the node that we need to wrap and put it into the expression role here. And in the end, we simply return the expression statement. So if we build this, and go back to our program here, and we now press Control remove. So if we now press enter and go to a new line and we invoke the code completion menu, what we can see is that MPS now shows the, includes the variable as before, but also various kinds of expressions here. So um, we have the string literal, the number literal, the plus minus expression. So all the expressions that we have, it also includes them into the code completion menu. So we could now select a number literal and then have um, automatically MPS do the logic behind the scenes to um, to wrap this in an expression statement. Um, you can always take a look at the uh, underlying AST in MPS by selecting where you would like to look at. So in this case, let's start at the workbook level. So um, there are two ways of doing it. One is you can include them in the in the tree on the left side here by pressing the by clicking on the on the settings here. Then you can say you would like to include uh, the node structure. Um, second here. Yeah, so uh, it was renamed. So it's now called show members. And if you include that, what you can see is the you can basically navigate through the complete tree here and see all the details. But this usually um, this usually clutters the um, the UI here on the left side in the in the logical view quite a lot. I personally don't like it so much, so I will just turn this off again. Um, but there's a second way of doing that. And this is um, either why why are the context menu? If you right click, there's the first entry here is called Show Note in Explorer. And if you do that, a new tool window opens at the bottom of the screen here, which is the Note Explorer for our uh, my workbook in this case. And there we can also explore how the underlying AST of the of the workbook looks like. So what we can see here is that there are um, the three variables a here. You can also double click here and then um, here, and then MPS will highlight the part uh, in the editor um, b and c, and we can also see that there is the expression statement. And if you open the tree for it, um, if you press the uh, uh, the, the small triangle here, 
expands it and we can see that there is a number literal in the role expression and we could open that as well then we can see okay this is a number literal and we can take a look at the properties here and the value is one two two three which is what we see on the screen here so um, that way MPS also allows you to explore the um, the underlying AST of your program uh, even if there are things that aren't shown in the editor uh, you can still see uh, these things to the um, uh, through the Node Explorer. It's often quite handy to to uh, debug um, your program if transformations didn't do what you expect. Um, it's easy to get an idea about uh, in which state it uh, put your program afterwards. Um, okay. Next thing that doesn't work yet is the user can now select from the code completion menu that he wants to instantiate a number or a string literal or add an equals or whatever expression here. But the user can't easily um, go to an empty line and just start typing numbers. Um, and What we want to, what we need to do to make this uh, happen is in a similar way as we worked with the um, expression statement, so that the user can start typing um, at the point where we expect an expression, um, uh, where we expect an expression statement. Just start typing the expression. We want to allow the user to just start typing. Uh, numbers at the point where we expect an uh, um, an expression and then automatically transform this into the number literal because in our AST we want to have it uh, well formed and um, represent numbers as number literals. Um, so in a similar way as we defined it for the expression statement, we can also define a substitute menu for the um, for an expression like this, and then we can one second. Otherwise, my voice is giving up soon. Okay, so we define a default substitute menu for the expression. And what we would like to do is we would like to wrap a number literal inside of it. So similar way as before, we select the default substitute menu to be wrapped. And in this case, we select the number literal. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, but in this case, uh, we need to do something more than uh, than just wrapping the node because we have something that the user is typing at the location, right? So we have oh, wait, let's uh, let's just implement this in a similar way as we did before. So in this case, we would just say when the wrap happens, we would like to create a new number literal. Okay, so new node number literal like this and simply return it. So we return a new number literal in this uh, case where, uh, where um, we expect an expression. Um, if we now go back to the program, um, we can see now that there's only two things in the code completion menu. Wait, let's remove it again, press an empty nine. And now the code completion menu removed quite a lot of things here. So 
there's no plus anymore in there, there's no equals, nothing. It only looks like there is the a number literal in this case available here. So this is because we replaced um oh sorry. It's the wrong one. Um so what we did here is that we um told MPS to uh, replace the default logic for the substitute menu with our own one. And our own one currently only includes the number literal. So to add back the original things, um, what we can do is we can just set a simple subconcepts menu here, define no filter, and it, this will include um, all the subconcepts of the expression into our substitute menu. So if you rebuild this again, go back to the workbook. Now all of the things are back here. But there's one thing you can notice is that there's now two entries for the number literal. So there's one for the default logic that was derived by MPS, which is include all subconcepts, which is what we you find here. And then there's a second thing that we contribute for the same concept, which is the number literal. So how can we get rid of that? Um, the first thing is, uh, and the easiest thing to do here is to just go to the number literal and by default remove it from the code completion menu. So as we did for the empty statement, we just do this for the number literal. So the default contribution to the code completion menu for a number literal is none. Um, so in this case, we simply define an empty menu for the number literal here. We build this and go back to the workbook. And now you can see that there's none. This was not what I was expecting. Uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right now there's uh, no entry here for it because yeah we know it's not showing it. Let's remove that for now just for simplicity reasons and do that later again. Um, because otherwise it gets now even more confusing. So, okay. We still have two entries here in the code completion menu for the number literal. Let's leave it like this. Um, what we now want to do is, um, we, s we have two entries, but if we start typing numbers, nothing happens yet, right? So we still, we want to allow the user to type a number and then um, wrap the, uh, the expression with the number literal. Um, so in this case, we, um, so what we didn't do yet is we have now two entries here for the code completion menu. Um, one that is a default one from MPS and the second one that we contributed. Um, there is also a key combination to get to the definition of them. If I remember it correctly, nope. I think it was command. No. Hmm. Hmm. 
I don't remember it. I haven't used it in a while. Nope. Mm. Not go to action, it was go to... Uh, Okay, I don't remember it now. Um, let's take a look at the keyboard mapping here. So I think it was go to no. Um, when was it go to action? Um, one second. Why is it not here? Okay, I have no idea now. Um, so yeah, there is a way to debug this. Um, when the code completion menu is open, I always thought it was Command Shift B, but apparently it's not. Nope. I have no idea. Um, okay. Um, let's go back to the substitute menu definition. Um, so right now we own in our custom contribution here we only create an empty a number literal where the value is not set to anything. Um, so we would like to um, initialize the number literal in here and set the value to something that the user has entered, right? So if the user starts typing like this, we want to take the value that the user has entered and assign it to the um, to the value property of the number literal that we create. Mm. So after we have created the new instance of the, after the number literal is created, we can go to here and assign the value. And now if we take a look at the inspector here, so how can we get the, um, the value from the, um, code completion menu system. So what has the user entered um, when he invoked, uh, when the code completion menu was in invoked? And uh, if we take a look in the inspector, there is a parameter here called um, pattern. And uh, it has the description string entered by user inside code completion menu pop up. Um, and then, yeah, used as a hint, uh, used to hide those actions uh, with matching text. Yeah, so this is the the actual thing that the user typed before the code completion was a uh, code completion menu was um, activated. Um, so we can just take the pattern here and assign it to the value. No rebuild. And if we go back to the Workbook here. Mm. Okay. One second. I didn't it work. Ah. Okay. Um. We still need to define if uh, when this substitution should happen um okay so one thing we can do is right now mps uh, has these two actions for the number that will in here and uh, 
they have both the same matching text, which is the thing MPS shows on the left side. Um, but what you can do in the code completion menu, you can define um, the matching text as um, a property here. Uh, but this is, so if we would do this, so let's say we simply define some text here for this action and then go back to the workbook and invoke the code completion menu. MPS interestingly has def assumes now that everything should be displayed like this. Okay, weird. Ah, okay, so for all wraps, uh, oh, this was at the wrong location. I defined it on the expression statement, okay. That's correct. Okay, so for the number literal, we do this here, simple, on text. And then rebuild. And we can all see there's uh, the default number literal action and our sum text action. And if we would type now sum Uh, if we would start typing now and type S and then invoke the code completion menu, it's still not uh, unique. So MPS will not match this against anything that is in the in the code completion menu at this point. Um, but if we would now select um, our new contribution that we added, the SOM text here, what happens is that MPS um, executes the code that we have written and the code says, take what the user has entered here, the pattern, and assign it to the value of the number literal. And what happens now is, if we open the, the inspector here, the node explorer, and we take a look at our number literal and the properties, we can see that we have simply assigned the user, the, the, the value that the user entered as um, a value here, even if it's invalid for the number uh, literal. So let's remove that. Again, and go back to the um, to the substitution menu definition. Um, so what we want to do is um, we can get rid of the text first of all. So what we want to do is um, this transformation when the user entered some text should only happen if it's text that is uh, still valid as a number. So there's a can substitute method that we can overwrite here. Um, or implement, actually. Uh, and here we get the pattern, the node, and the, the whole context uh, where the editor is at the moment. But the interesting parts here are uh, the, 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 um, the wrapped item and the pattern here. But for us, we currently are only interested in the pattern. So. Let's go to the pattern and um, match it again. So against our regex, which uh, we defined for the value property, which is um, it must be a number from from zero to nine, uh, and there can be multiple of them. Okay, so let's do this again. Does not show up. Ah, it works. Okay. So in the code completion menu, we still have the number literal to choose from, which is the which MPS contributes. And there's also the implicit one where you just can start typing now. So create an empty line and just start typing two. It doesn't work. Nice. It works when you press enter. Weird. Okay. Mm. 
Okay, so if we now start typing here, um, we get the automatic transformation. So I just type one two. Um, here we go to the MP9, type one two, this, and then um, MPS transforms this into a into a expression statement that also contains the number literal. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's go to the workbook, open the explorer again here, and now take a look at the line with the, with the 12 here, open the, the uh, explorer, and we can now see that there is an expression statement and it contains a number that will, and the value is set to 12 in this case. So now with this chain of Rep actions that we defined. So the first rep action allows us to enter an expression at a point where an expression statement is expected. And then the second rep action allows us to enter a number literal or enter text at a point where an expression is expected and then produce a number literal out of this text. Um, but we still have to define constraint here because otherwise we could just start typing any text. We remove this again um, and just return true. What happens now is we start typing text here and then empty nine. Um, it would this is a bit more slowly so that you can see what's going on. So if I start typing, um, MPS still invokes this transformation for us because it thinks it should create a number literal, but the value is immediately invalid because I now typed S and S is not a valid value for the um, for a number literal, uh, but MPS still transforms it. So we have to make sure to not violate the constraints um, by implementing um, our matches by implementing our constraints, so to say, twice in this place, because for one, we want to give the user feedback when our um, when the value or the, or the number that is wrong, but on the other hand, we also want to tell the code completion menu here that um, it should only invoke this transformation if it will not create something that is invalid afterwards. Mm. Um, so even for what still doesn't work is, let's say, we now type four, and then we would like to continue typing um, the plus now because we want to say if four plus five, for instance. Um, this still doesn't work. So we would need to, um, and if we invoke the code completion menu at this location, for instance, MPS doesn't show anything. So the string here is sent to the to the number literal. The number literal says, okay, with this value, it's no longer valid. So the editor renders it in red. Um, but there's also no way to now continue typing here. So to enable that, we would need to use, use uh, site transformations. So MPS also has a language for defining that. Mm. But as you can see, it's already getting quite cumbersome to define this um, rules for even a single for even a, a simple case here where we just want to type expressions. Um, so you would need to implement now a side transformation on the right side of a number literal. We can do this just as a um, as a demo here. So just for the plus in this case. Um, 
So we want to do a transformation menu contribution. So there's uh, two, in general, two different kinds of um, um, of menus you can contribute to. So one is the substitute menu, which is for creating um, new things at a location in in your model in the AST. And the second thing is uh, transfer the transformation menu. And the transformation menu also allows you to contribute to specific places like left of something or right of something and what that means we will take a look at that in a second okay so what we want to do is we want to allow the user to continue typing on a number literal so the transformation menu we want to define is for the number literal um, and then MPS asks us for the section um, for, for a section where we would like to put this to mm. And in the section, there are basically three different kinds that you can um, select here. Uh, the first thing is completion, which is similar to the default or to the substitute menu. The second thing is uh, second thing is content assistant, um, context assistant. Um, that's the editor context uh, assistant, which um, I think we have seen it before. I didn't explain it. Um, so let's go here uh, and see. Does it pop up? Why not? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Should actually pop up here. For some reason it's not working. Okay. MPS usually shows hints. Oh, let's try it. Concept. I don't see any hints here. So usually MPS shows um Yeah. Ah okay, now it worked. Okay, so we have to wait a bit until it shows up. So these are uh, context assistant. Um it's called an MPS, so this is um, also written with the same language as the, the the transformation menu, so you can also contribute to these kind of um, of actions that are shown as like uh, buttons in the editor. But we also don't want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to contribute to the site transformation menu, which means um, we can now decide where we want to contribute, so left or right. So left means we want to contribute to the left side of some. Uh, concept and the uh, right thing means we want to contribute to the right side. So let's do this for the for the right side uh, as an example. So what we want to do is we want to allow the user to type um, text at the um, at that location. Can we use wrap here? Let's try that. Let's wrap the default for ex binary expression. And let's see what happens here. Uh, wrapped item, created node, target node. Um, So created node is then type. This is the new binary expression. Okay, so let's try something. If we assign this is only node. Ah, node itself. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens now. So what we said is we want at the right side of a number literal um, We want to include all of the binary expressions Let me rebuild 
so nope it does something but definitely not what i wanted it to do um okay so let's do that the old-fashioned way here so let's define an action <coughs> So if the user types plus at the right side of a number literal, um, we want to do something. So first of all, um, we get the so okay. So in the action block here, we define first thing is the text, which is the matching text that the user enters. Um, in this case, it's static, so it's the plus. If the user enters plus at the right side of a number literal. Um, we want to do something. We have no additional um, uh, um, checking we want to do, so we say this is always true. So at any number literal where the user is typing plus, we want to execute this action. And now there's the execute block where we can define what to do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new binary, uh, a new plus expression. So we do new node. Plus expression this and put it into some local variable plus then what we want to do is we want to assign the number literal where we were typing on um, into the left side of our plus because we are typing on the right side of the of the number so it should be on the left of the plus afterwards so that the plus is shown on the right of the number um, and then we assign it the node here like this um, and then uh, okay yeah uh, okay so what we want to do first of all is we want to um, create the new plus expression but we also want to replace so at the point where then at the place where the number literal was we want to put the plus expression so node is the um is the no is the number literal in this case so we want to replace it uh, with the plus expression we just created and then we want to assign the number literal to the left side of um the new plus so what does replace do here so replace replaces an existing node with a different one and puts the new thing at the exact same location where the thing you replace was um but the node is not uh, not really deleted by that so um we only taking the the node out of the tree we do not actively destroy it so we can work with it afterwards um, and in this case, we can still use it and then put it into a new place in the AST, which is here the left side of the plus. Build. And see what happens now. So let's first create a number here three, and now press plus. Okay, what has happened? Um, the code that we've written that replaces the um the number literal with the plus has actually worked as we expected it to work so um it has now created the plus expression put the existing three into the left side of it and then um the right side is still empty we can also continue typing here and now it's uh the error is also gone um, but maybe you notice something here, so undo. So we are here again. So if I now press press plus here, what happens is that the carrot still remains at the old location. So if I would continue typing, so let's remove the plus again. Okay, so I type plus here. And now I continue typing. I would expect that I type on the red on the right of the plus and not on the left. Um so what we need to take care of is that the selection is set accordingly. Um, and 
this is done with the uh, editor context. So the editor context allows us to manipulate um, the state, how the um, current editor behaves, or, or the state of the current editor, and uh, this also includes the caret position. So what we can do now is we can say, um, uh, one thing we are still missing is, so if we take a closer look here, oh no, that should work. So let's try that. So, um, okay. This is now a bit tricky. What you need to do to select something in the editor context is you need to go to the node that you want to select and um, select the select in editor context from the code completion menu. Then the first context, it's uh, context, first parameter we are asked for is the editor context. So let's um, assign that here and then if we press enter again, uh, we can see that we can also pass additional arguments to it. So in this case, the editor cell. So everything that we see on the on the screen here, um, the whole editor of MPS is organized in cells. And when we select something, we can also tell MPS which cell to um, select. And if we open the code completion menu for this, um, we could we can see that uh, uh, there are various kinds of things we can select. We can define a uh, we can supply an ID of a cell if we have manually assigned IDs to cells. Um, we don't do this here at the moment. We could say we want to um, go to the editor cell that represents a specific property. Our plus has no properties, so there's nothing we can select there. Um, Okay, yeah, there are, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's two ways of selecting the properties. One is completely programmatically, where you have to basically care for the proper for getting the right property you want to select manually, and then there's the second way where you can uh where you get autocomplete for the declared ones. So in case where you need more flexibility, you can escape from the uh from this predefined thing of the language and just go to the um to, to plain Java and then you're on your own basically. Um, and then one thing we could do here is we could say we want to select the last editable cell, which um, for a binary expression is here on the right side. Um, okay, so rebuild that, oh, sorry. Um, and now press, if I press plus here, MPS, executes the transformation and places the carrot where we would uh, where we ask it to place it at the last editable location in this um, in the binary expression which is the right side of it um, we could also do this um, in a different way so now where we would say select the right node but both of them would work in similar fashion but if you have more complex editors um, selecting the Last editable, editable cell might not be um, what you want to do, so you can also um, set the select more fine-grained by telling MPS to select a given a node. We could also just say that uh, we would like to select the right side of the expression. So we could go to the substitute menu here, and instead of selecting the plus and then telling MPS to put the carrot into the last editable location, we could also say plus dot write dot select and then in editor context and that would behave essentially the same way as uh, um, as the second line here in our case. So this is much more specific here you tell MPS really select the right side and this is more um, use the last thing in the line that is editable. Okay, but now what we would need to do is we would need to define this for, um, we would de need to define entries in this, size, in this site transformation menu for all of the cases that we want to have, right? So um, the problem is also we cannot easily, um, 
reuse this. So even for the left and the right side, it's different because in one case, we want to assign the existing number to the left of the plus. And if we are, um, and in the other case, we want to assign it to the right. So we would have to, in all of these cases, we would need to write our own contributions to the um, transformation menu. Um, and uh, for our three binary expressions that we have, we would already need to define six contributions to the side transformation menu. So for each of the concepts, one transformation to the um, to the left and one transformation on the right of the um, of the number letter. Um, so this is this can be quite uh, work to do. So um, and it's also easy to miss. So the argument is not necessarily it's a lot of work to do, but it's a lot of work to get these editors consistent. So if you forget one of these um, for the binary expressions that we define, so you, you define it for plus minus, and then you forget the multiplication, then it doesn't work consistently in your editor. And this is something users will complain about. Um, so what I will do is I will show you a way how we can do this in a, in an easier way, um, and how we can get to more consistent editors easily. Um, there is an open source project that is called the MPS extensions. So you can uh, go to it on GitHub. It is uh, github.com slash that brain slash mps minus extensions. And uh, that repository contains a number of um, useful uh, extensions to MPS. So uh, the aim is that you, with these extensions, they are closely developed um, in conjunction with MPS. So they should always work for the latest version. They are updated, etc. but they are not part of MPS itself because um, they are something that the community uh, maintains around it. Um, but JetBrains tries to not break them or at least fix them uh, or change API usages in there if there is APIs in MPS that, that are removed. And uh, these MPS extensions contain um, a module called Grammar Cells. There's also a link to some documentation um, here which is a GitHub page that tells you how to get started with it, how to download them, how you can use them in your favorite build system, what is the state of the individual versions, etc. Um, and it also has a guide how to contribute, how to build, and then some documentation about uh, some of the extensions there. The documentation is not, um, uh, it could be better, let's put it like this. So there's a lot of stuff that is not uh, well documented at the moment, which is still missing. Um, about the grammar cells that we will talk about later, there's a paper, uh, which I can uh, provide a link for in the code repository as well. Um, but what we need to do is we can just go to GitHub and then uh, there's the releases tab here. If we open it, um, GitHub has finished loading here. We can see that there's automatically uh, releases published to GitHub, which contain a, a zip file here. These are now currently nightly builds, um, where you can just download the zip file. Um, and in the documentation, there's also uh, a section about how to do this, how to download um, the uh, artifacts from uh, a Maven repository, for instance. Mm. I have already downloaded one of these. Uh, uh, one of the, the versions here. So I think it was this one because I prepared the tutorial, I think three or four days ago. Um, I will put the exact link also in the in the readme of the, um, we can do this now, I think. Let's copy the link um, and open the readme file of our simple language. Um, open folder. Source. Okay, 
and let's go to the readme here um, and put in a new paragraph uh, and series. Um, okay, it's extensions. And just put in the link here for now and add some more instructions what to do with it in a minute. Um, I have already downloaded this particular version and extracted it. So it's a zip file, you can extract it. And then uh, what I will do is I will copy this to our repository because we want to use it as a library in MPS so that the open source uh, components in the MPS extensions are available to our project. Um, for the first step we will do this manually and then later on decide how we can do this automatically and take care of that the dependencies are correct. Um, so I will create a new folder in the, um, in, the, uh, in the repository, call it lib and for now just paste the um, folder that contains the content of the zip file in there. Okay. So next thing is we need to make it available in MPS. And to do so, we can go to the settings. So go into the settings, um, or preferences of MPS, or set, and I think it's called preferences on the Mac and settings on Windows. So on Windows it's file, preferences or settings, and uh, on the Mac it's uh, the uh, Clicking on the MPS button, uh, MPS text here, and then going to uh, preferences. Okay, and then the preferences open, and in the tree on the left side, there's a, an entry called build execution deployment. And if we open this, there's a, a sub entry here called project libraries. And uh, this is a way how we can make um, plugins and um, other open source components uh, that are usable inside of MPS available to the to the current project. So we can just add a new project library here, give it some name, call it MPS extensions. And then we are asked for a path where the, the project library should point to. In this case, it's lib MPS extensions, open, what now happens behind the scenes is that MPS is loading the, the content of it. So it took a short moment to actually load this. Uh, and as you have seen down at the right of my uh, screen, it uh, has also indexed that. So if we now open the modules pool, we can see that there is some more content. Um, so there are some new languages, most notably languages that start with uh, com and better MPS util. So this is uh, still a pointer at the origin, at the at the roots of uh, of the MPS extensions. So large parts of the MPS ext extensions were formerly known as the Embedder platform, uh, but have been renamed and refactored uh, to some degree, and then put, been uh, were put into the the MPS extensions here. And inside of the of the modules pool, we can see that there's now a new set of languages called grammar cells. <coughs> um, or one language called grammar cells. And this language is um, an extension to MPS, which allows us to define editors, um, or which extends the editor definition language to give us um, a different front end or extensions to the, to the current way of how MPS defines editors, where we can include how the user should interact with these editors. Um, how can we use it? So let's go to our language. And then we want to use it in the editor aspect. So let's go to the editor aspect of the language and open the um, model properties here, like this. And there's a second, there are three tabs here. So the first one is dependencies, which is like referencing things that are defined somewhere else. And the second tab is used languages. So this is the set of uh, languages that are available to us 
when we define editors. And in this case, it includes the, the general purpose dev kit, which is like Java, um, and the language for defining editors, which is called JetBrains MPS Lang editor. And what we want to do is we want to add grammar cells here. So let's just um, click the plus button. And in the resulting uh, pop up, we select um, com embedder MPS util grammar cells. Press OK. Uh, yes, we want to add the libraries uh, file to, to Git as well and commit it later. OK. So what do we get from this is um, we get some extensions to the way how we can define editors. And this includes that we can easily set the behavior, for instance, this whole uh, wrapping that we did manually here with uh, implementing this logic how to, to wrap an expression into an expression statement. Um, we can define this um, in a declarative way. So let's remove this uh, manually defined expression statement substitute menu like this. And now go to the editor of our expression statement. Um, what we manually did is that we defined that MPS should allow us to wrap this expression here um, in the cases where an expression statement is expected. So let's remove that, open the code completion menu and search for grammar. Um, so all the contributions that Grammar Cells is doing to the um, to the editor definition language is that they uh, they start with grammar dot and then uh, the specific concept that you that you can use. And if we take a look at what's in there, there is something called grammar dot wrap in here, and this is essentially doing what we implemented manually before. So what you can say is from our editor definition here derive that at the places where an expression statement is allowed you the user can also enter the expression and automatically wrap it because the logic to wrap is pretty simple um, in most cases we we define it the same right so <coughs> let's see what happens now? So we removed the imperative implementation of, of the wrap and replaced this with this declaration. And if we now open the code completion menu again, even though we deleted our manual way of, uh, of wrapping, it still works the same. So from this declarative declaration, we have now inferred that the logic for wrapping um, is put into the uh, uh, into the the, uh, the the code completion menu system of MPS. Um, and now we can use the same mechanics uh, as we use for wrapping the expression, we can also use this for wrapping values. So this implementation here, which, uh, oh no, not the expression. So this implementation here, where we said, if the user enters a number, make a number literal out of it. Um, and put it into the place where an expression is expected. We can also uh, use grammar cells to express this. And we can do this in a similar way as we did for the um, the expression statement. So let me delete the manual definition here so that it doesn't infer, interfere with the things that we did. Um, and go to the editor of our number letter. And remove the editor cell that shows the value and go to grammar dot wrap 
And now instead of selecting the expression to wrap, we select the, the value to wrap. So let's do that, build that. And now let's start typing here, one, two, three, four. And we get a number. Um, but do you notice something? We haven't, if we type, if I type not a number, but some arbitrary characters that are not valid as a number literal, the substitution doesn't happen. So before we had to manually specify this, that this transformation creating a number literal out of text that the user entered should only happen when there is, um, a valid string that the user has entered that is a number and we manually had to ensure this so there was no integration with the with the constraints so in the constraints aspect of the number literal we already defined that a number literal can only contain numbers from 0 to 9 um but we had to respecify it at the substitute menu entry because those two worlds weren't weren't connected and what grammar cells is doing behind the scenes is now it's connecting those two worlds for us so if you define that something uh, if we define here that we want to wrap the value it automatically looks into the constraints that we defined for the value here and only execute this transformation if the um the um, the value is a valid and if the user has entered text that is valid as the value for the number literal here. So it will never happen in the cases where I just entered um, some other characters than numbers. Uh, what also works already is the integration with the existing things. So with our transformation that we can take a number and type plus on the right side and then create a plus expression out of it this already this still works so it's not using either grammar cells or something else um yeah so Grammar cells really helps you connecting those those uh, those two worlds here. In this case, it's the constraint aspect of your language and the um, the interaction with the editor. Um, but as my voice is uh, short and is, is almost giving up, um, I would uh, end this here for today um, and continue next week when it's hopefully better. Um, and then give you some more insights in how we can define the transformations for the plus in a more generic way. So right now this is it only works for plus we because we have an explicit definition of it. Um, and uh, try to uh, um, generalize this with grammar cells as well. And also show you some other neat things you can do with uh, with grammar cells like ensuring that um, the expression tree that you have there is always in a valid state because right now we do not ensure that um, what we call is uh, uh, that the tree is balanced so that uh, plus and uh, multiplications for instance are um, in the tree in the right order um, as we would expect them to be um, and grammar cells also gives us um uh, ways of uh, of expressing that as well um i will put the link to the to the paper about grammar cells into the readme of the of the repository as well um and commit this shortly after the stream um you can find this actually here so it's on github in my account so um the repository is called basic lang um you can clone it from there 
and I will also put in some basic instructions how to download um, the MPS extensions and set up uh, the project library correctly so that you can directly use um, the project. Uh, apart from that, you can uh, take a look at our Slack channel where you can always provide feedback on the individual episodes, discuss further topics. Um, and on the Slack instance, you can also meet various other people who do things with MPS. Um, yeah, and if you liked what you saw, then uh, press the, the follow button uh, to get notified when I stream the next time. Um, the current plan is that we continue on next um, next Tuesday uh, with the basics of a type system. But uh, before we start with the type system, we will still take a look at the grammar cells, things we didn't cover today. Um, and hopefully my voice is better then. Um, yeah. So that's it. Um, I hope you liked it and uh, feel free to provide feedback on the various channels. That's it. Bye.